Oh, this clip is broken. We got one of the uh, one of the Christmas trees is gone as well. This snap is not good, and that one's gone completely. So that's not so good. I'm not sure if I want to even try this, but. You know what, maybe I should save this for late. Well, never mind then. What I'd really like to see is the one that's here. Oh, that's a lot more robust, I think. No, it isn't. It's not, that would not be my favorite snap fit. <clears throat> but at least it's not broken, which is uh, better than last time. So um, we'll, tr we'll, we'll have a deeper look at this sort of stuff later on. But at least it snap. I, that's, that's <laughs> I mean, it snaps together real well. And that's, that's good. That's de definitely better than what, uh, what happened with the model before. Hey, boys and girls. Uh, welcome back. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the frunk. The frunk is uh, held in with seven seven fasteners. They're all the same, they all have captured washers, which is kind of the way we would like to see these things. The other thing that's kind of important is that all of them have a dog point. This means that you're going to ensure that the bolts go in straight and they never cross thread. Plus, when you run them down with, the, uh, with, the, with this fastener, you're going to get good clamp load because when you run screws down on plastic, they really don't like to be compressed uh, too much. So. This is a good idea. So let's put these things aside here. So <clears throat> the first thing is, um, as you saw in the other, uh, the other video, I uh, removed it and, and, it and the snaps weren't broken. I think one of the things that they did in order to make that happen was they put a relief in here. You'll see it a little bit later, but I want to point out that where this uh, strut is coming in for the air shock, they've made a, they've made a, a, a slot here. That's a good idea. That probably is what was causing some of the consternation when they were trying to put this thing together. So let's tie and put it apart here. Now this is snapped in. Uh, I've already released it because I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't wanna have a struggle on my hands. But this, this cover is different than the old cover. They look similar, but they're not the same. So let's have a look at the old Model 3 cover. So you'll see a bunch of stickers these stickers are not cheap and, and pretty ugly. So these things have disappeared. And again, you're looking at extra money that doesn't have to be there that Tesla's come in and removed from the process. If we look at the two of them here, you can see some parts are similar, but something's different here. The air vents are a little bit different. And the reason for that is because the plenum is quite a bit different. So you've got this and this when really that's all the air they needed, so they plugged the rest. <clears throat> Not a bad idea. So let's, uh, let's put that right here, because I may be coming back to that in a minute. Now when we look down into the um, front of dash here, you'll see that this is the, um, this is the new uh, plenum, the new place where all the air comes in to feed the vehicle. Now if we look over here at the, um, at the old Model 3, you can see that uh, this is quite a bit bigger. Um, and that's why there was more vent, if you like, in the, uh, in, the, in the cowl vent. We didn't even need to check back and forth with the, uh, with the old drawings or the old, uh, old uh, pictures. That one was kind of like obvious right away. The other thing we noticed was um, <clears throat> they've eliminated uh, this little carpet here. Now, that doesn't seem like a heck of a lot, but uh, again, if you go back to my calculations, we're looking at $68,000 $68, a year. Um, eliminating something like this is a lot more expensive. And um, <clears throat> quite frankly, they probably got feedback from the customer saying they didn't care about that anyway. If we look here, we see that, um, we see that the little button for child protection and uh, this cowl, look similar, they look similar to what you see here on the old Model 3, but hey, what's this? They've changed the design slightly, probably so that uh, they can move that release button back a little bit further, 
and make it so that it actually glows. In the old one, I, I never really noticed it. In this one, it shines because of that, that little change. So we're looking at <clears throat> small changes that make a kind of a big difference. We're not expecting to see gigantic changes, but we are pretty happy with the changes that we've seen so far. So let's just take the, uh, the frunk out. And, uh, <clears throat> and let, me, uh, let me show you the contrast between that and the old plenum. Now you can see that <laughs> there's quite a bit of a difference between this part and this part. It's quite a bit smaller. And to be quite frank, that'll do just fine because that air is more than enough to, uh, to cover what's going on inside the, uh, inside the cabin. This was overdone, and all I see here is extra parts for maybe water to water ingress and things like that. So an improvement an improvement that's probably going to reduce the cost. So <clears throat> now that we're under the hood, let's see what, um, let's see what, we, what we've got here as far as uh, the new arrangements. Now, on the old Model 3, we had the Super Bottle. And I raved about this. I really thought this was glorious. I thought, man, this is good engineering. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they brought out this. Now, the, the new, the new, um, uh, HVAC system. This is a little bit different than than what we've seen in the past. Number one, some people commented about the chicken bands that were holding the um, condenser in place. Um, they've they've obviously figured out how to get rid of that moment that they had that was causing the shaking and the leaking. If we look down here, we can see that this is a they're calling it the super manifold now. <clears throat> and if we look over here you'll see there's no, no markings on it whatsoever. But the bigger change is the one that we're looking at here. So when we got our Model Y, the version that we had was revision A. And then we had the, uh, the revision that came from our friends over uh, with one of the other vehicles. They were looking at revision C. And now we're looking at revision E. So you're looking at iteration after iteration after iteration, trying to make sure that this product is doing the best it possibly can to make the customers happy. Now I want you to have a look down here at the, um, <clears throat> at the uh, sound prevention device that they put over the top of the, uh, of the uh, um, compressor. Okay, here's the old one. And you can see that this, this shield it's good for what it was supposed to do. It's acting as a shield. But the new one, the new one allows the operator to fish a path for the wire harnesses. And it's got little appointments so that you can't screw up as you put that together. Now, this is called pokayoke. Pokayoke is a Japanese word for hmm, you can't put it together wrong or goof proofing, whatever you want. I think that this is a very good idea. This is a much better idea than what we've seen in the past. The one thing that I forgot to mention too was, if you notice, there was a little yellow, or sorry, this orange tag, which tells the fireman where to cut so that it can kill the power. So that's what's going on here. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about what we've noticed as far as the frunk itself. So if we look at the Model Y, this one over here, um, you can see that it's deeper and wider than the Model 3. And then if we look, this is the 18 Model 3. And then if we look at the 20 Model 3, you can see that it's much shallower and much narrower than the old two, uh, two versions are. And the reason for that is primarily because of the new heating and cooling system. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that's important <clears throat> in car manufacturing is to have things so that they're backward compatible. This frunk will fit into an old Model 3, but the old Model 3 will not fit into the new Model 3. And that will not fit into either of these because that, that vehicle is taller and, uh, and basically bigger than what the Model 3 is. So we're looking at all of the different little changes that they've made at the speed of thought because, like I said, Two years, two years, and you see this kind of difference. 
that's a big, big deal for me, a huge deal for me. So let's, uh, let's move back here. And uh, my closing comments, if you like. I see a lot of good things here. We already talked about not breaking the clips. And they figured out why the clips were breaking. And they've repaired that. The thin wall that we saw before is gone. All of these little features, all these little features make a big difference at the end of the day as far as cost. Everything I see here is 100% good engineering. I don't have any bad comments on this, on this, uh, on this operation here on the, on the front so far. And the cooling system, <clears throat> we're going to do some testing on this, but I've already gotten dozens of people calling me back saying, they have an old Model 3 and a new Model 3, and this thing is outperforming it by about 30%. And that's in cold weather. Cold weather is the bane of all the batteries and everything else. This thing is doing a better job by 30% between two cars sitting there just, just basically heating and cooling the inside of the, uh, inside the Model 3. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please uh, continue to tip the uh, cashiers. They're all out there risking their lives. We'll see you soon, hopefully, uh, hopefully real soon, to show you more about what we found on the new Model 3. Thanks a lot. We'll see you all.